Hello, welcome to the VSC Healing Begins Here podcast series. The Victim Service Center, or the VSC, is a nonprofit organization that provides free, individualized counseling and other services to survivors of any kind of trauma in Central Florida. With me today to talk more about the VSC, its history, and its services is VSC Executive Director Louis Damiani. So, Louis, welcome and thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I look to, forward to it. To start off, can you tell me a little bit about the VSC services that we offer to survivors? Sure, sure. Well, the mission of the Victim Service Center is to provide individualized services and resources to victims of violent crime, sexual assault, or really any other kind of traumatic event. We do it a whole variety of ways. We run a 24-hour helpline uh, that's, that's uh, staffed by master's level counselors and social workers. Uh, we provide therapy, victim support, and you know the beauty of our services is that they're all free and readily available to anybody in our community. And we're also the Certified Rape Crisis Center, is that correct? Yeah, so one of the designations that we have is exactly that, the, the Certified Rape Crisis Center. We are the only rape crisis center serving Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County. So really, uh, the only rape crisis center in Central Florida. And what that means is, if someone has been the victim of sexual assault, we're the designated organization that provides um, services. Absolutely. And who are those services available to? So really our, our target audience is uh, 12 and up, uh, any adult, any men, women, families, and we do the forensic evidence collection in the immediate aftermath of a sexual assault. But also, you know, our average client doesn't even seek services until about nine years after their victimization. So many of our clients are people that were maybe abused as a child, and then nine or 10 years later, there's a triggering event, and they're coming forward now, and they're looking for counseling, support, um, and, and uh, you know, and any other services that we might be able to provide. So. The beauty also that I'll point out about our services is that they not only extend to the person that was a victim, but we, we call them secondary survivors, but family members. So we do family counseling, or sometimes there's a spouse that's also troubled by uh, the victimization, and we'll work with you know, uh, a couple, like I say, uh, as I mentioned, a family, um, but we also do lots of one-on-one -on -one directly for people that have been victimized. That's amazing. And I think we also have support groups. Is that correct? Yeah. There's, so there's a lot of, of, of various kinds of support groups. We have a support group for about everything. So we have a, a, a black survivor support group. We do uh, Spanish support groups. We have general support groups generally with women. We have mixed support groups. We have men's support groups. We have support groups um, specifically targeted the LGBT community. So uh, we do like, um, we have a different couple of different platforms that we use. One is called DBT. We have another one where we actually have a gardening group and by, by gardening and working together, they sort of work through their the processing of their healing. So it's, it's super fascinating. And uh, we really have an extraordinary team and a lot of opportunity for people to, to find a space where they can find the healing that they need. And that's the beauty of our services as well, is that they're really individualized and we try to meet somebody in their space and you know help them get the healing that they need and, and pair them with what's going to work best. Absolutely. And you know, all of our services are completely free and confidential, but do survivors need to report in order to receive services from the VSC? Well, when we talk about reporting, you're talking about law enforcement. Do they have to have, call 911? Do they have to have a case? The answer is absolutely not. We have a 24-7 helpline. Uh, th that number, by the way, is 407-500-HEAL. Um, we also have a website at healhere.org where people can email us if that's their comfort level. Uh, a lot of ways to reach us. Now, if you are the victim of sexual assault, 
we certainly encourage you to call 911. If you call 911, they're immediately going to call us uh, anyway. But if somebody were to reach out to us directly because they don't want to involve law enforcement, our services are completely confidential. We treat that client exactly the same way. It's just that law enforcement is not part of it. If at some point later down the line, they want to report to law enforcement after they talk to us, well then we'll help them do that as well. Awesome, and also, why are these services so important for our community? Well, I mean, you know, we just, our mission, our goal is to get people to live their fullest life. And as I mentioned previously, it's like nine years on average before people come forward for a myriad of reasons, shame, guilt, um, fear of not being believed. And, you know, what I would say to people is don't be, hesitate, reach out, get the help. If you, if you sense that there's a family member that needs help, get the help. Because the, the research will show, uh, you know, the empirical research will show that the sooner after someone is victimized, the sooner that uh, after their trauma that we can react and try to help them, the, the better chance that they're going to live the best, fullest life and, and get back that control that was taken from them. Absolutely. And you mentioned that there is a LGBTQ plus support group and things like that. So how is VSE accessible to all kinds of survivors? Well, we have a, a variety of ways that people can reach. As I mentioned, there's the 24 hour helpline. So anybody can pick up that call. It's always going to uh, pick up that phone. It's always going to be answered by the third ring by a master's level counselor. So our team is on it 24 hours a day if we need to respond in person. I'm proud to tell you that on average, our response time from the time a call comes in to being on site with a victim, if it's the immediate aftermath, is about 20, uh, about 28 minutes. So our folks are on it uh, 24 hours a day. But in addition to the, the helpline, people can come to our offices and we have a main office just south of downtown Orlando on Michigan Street, but then we also have a brand new satellite office out in the Winter Garden area. We also have satellite office in Osceola County, down in Kissimmee, and we just recently also opened a satellite office at the Department of Health in Seminole County. So we have satellites, so if people would like to have that one-on-one, -on -one. we try to put satellite offices close enough that they can, that it's convenient to wherever they might be. Uh, but then, you know, since the pandemic, that was a game changer really for us as well, because now we also provide virtual services. Leading up to it, everything was in person. And, you know, the satellites are a great place to do that, or our main office. But now, we literally can, we picked up a whole bunch of people that either didn't have transportation, weren't comfortable sitting in a one-on-one -on -one environment, but yet they love speaking to our counselors virtually. So, you know, the key is if somebody wants service, find us on the website, call us on the helpline. We're going to help figure out what is going to work best for you? And then we're going to, again, pair you with that service, whether it's virtual, in person, at a satellite, at our main office, just talking to somebody over the phone periodically, uh, what, whatever's going to work best for that person. And just as a final question to you, Louie, why do you find this work rewarding for yourself? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, mostly for me, what makes me get out of bed in the morning is twofold. Most importantly is the success stories of everybody that that comes and sees us. And, you know, and I, I get I get emails, I get letters written to me all the time of people going, oh, my God, thank you for the work that you all do. You've you've saved my life. And, uh, you know, that that to me is energizing. But st the second piece of it is the team that we have. You know, nobody we're a nonprofit. Nobody's getting rich doing this work. But the people that come to work for us are so completely passionate about helping, helping heal people. Their whole purpose is to try to help individuals, you know, as I said, get that, get their life back and, yeah. and live their life. And that's what they do all day, every day. Right. So it's humbling for me to go in and see a team galvanized around 
that belief and, and, and that work and then helping people every day. So, Absolutely. you know, that's for me, that's what it's about. Thank you so much, Louie, for sharing all that amazing information about the services that we provide to survivors in the community. You bet. Thank you so much for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Next, we will be joined by Rachel, one of our survivors, to hear from her what it was like being a client at the Victim Service Center, so stay tuned. Healing Begins Here podcast. Once again, we have Louis Damiani, the executive director from the VSC. And we are now joined by Rachel, one of our amazing survivors, to chat about her story and what it was like being a client at the Victim Service Center. So Rachel, what was it like receiving services at the VSC? Oh gosh, um, at the time, I didn't realize how valuable it was. I was in so much shock. It was hard to understand what was going on and, and if I was even dreaming. Um, I uh, received services at what looked like an unassuming house in the middle of the neighborhood. Um, in fact, when you first walk in, you feel like you're walking into someone's home, like into their living room, except there were pamphlets of sexual assault on the coffee table. And, you know, people, nurses were there and the lights were low and... Um, but then the nurses were very calming and patient. Um, their sole agenda was to be there for me and put me back in control. Um, every part of the examination was explained to me and done at my affirmation and pace. Um, they gave me a change of clothes because everything that I was wearing was taken into evidence, including my underwear and shoes. Um, and, and they followed up with me at certain intervals, um, especially around court dates that might be triggering. Um, sure. they offered me counseling and invited me to group therapy sessions. Um, but what I was shocked to learn later was that wasn't the norm, um, that a lot of times victims are taken to the hospital, which is a very cold and bright and sterile environment, um, where they are just a number. Everyone there is on a different schedule, um, and it isn't yours. And I can't imagine being thrust into that environment directly after experiencing the trauma that I had. Um, I was very lucky that I was taken to the VSC, and my healing was able to begin day one. Absolutely. Thanks so much for sharing all of that, Rachel. And I wanted to ask you, what did you find particularly healing um, at the VSC? What was the most healing thing for you? Gosh, there is a lot. There's um, a therapy, you know, individual and group therapy. Um, but I would say the most important thing that they gave me was the opportunity to tell my story and to help others. Um, it. It, 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 it's been an opportunity to turn something so terrible into something positive. Um, but they've, you know, even helped my husband. Um, he was able to write a blog that was helpful, was healing for him as well. And um, it was just knowing that they were there and that I could reach out any time um, was, was very important. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Rachel, for, of course, being here and sharing your story and talking a little bit about VSC services. Lou, I know here at the VSC we advocate to start by believing uh, when, we, when a survivor tells their story. So can you talk a little bit about why that's important and what start by believing is? Well, to start by believing is, you know, basically exactly what Rachel was just sharing, that when you come through our doors, nobody is ever going to question uh, you, your motive, uh, whether you were somehow complicit or responsible, that's just never going to happen. Our fundamental premise when you walk in the door is that we believe you, we know, and I can tell you from my experience, I have seen so many people like Rachel come through our doors and I don't have a single example of someone who shouldn't have been believed. If they have the 
the strength and the courage to report their victimization, they clearly have had some kind of trauma occur in their life. And all of our people at the Victim Service Center understand that, um, and, and, and they encourage people to come forward and meet them in their space, just as Rachel was sharing. This is who we want to be. Our, our facilities are private, they're confidential. Anything that anybody might share with, with uh, one of our counselors is never gonna be shared with anyone else unless the individual asks us to share that information elsewhere. So really, um, we start by believing always 100% of the time, and, and, and I want you know, your viewers to understand that they should, if, it, if they ever can, they should reach out and try to get the help that they need. Our, our services, again, are always free and confidential and available to anyone that is in need. Thank you so much, Louie. And Rachel, I know that when you shared your story to law enforcement officers, to VSC, to, to nurses and <clears throat> other individuals that you worked with, that they believed you. There was no shed of, you know, idea that someone would doubt you or anything like that. Do you think that that made a difference in your healing? Um, entirely. It, like, uh, you know, people don't make up stories like this. Right. It's, it's very rare. Um, and being believed is everything to a victim. Um, when you deny their story, you are, are basically denying them or sending the message that what happened to them is no big deal or somehow their fault. Um, and th that just will plummet them down a path of denial and shame that is wholly undeserving. Um, I was lucky in, in many ways, not just that every man and woman that was involved with my case uh, believed me, but that I had family and everyone close to me as well um, believe me. And, um, you know, nine times out of ten, it the victim knows the person that hurt them. So it makes it really hard to come forward in the first place. So... Um, it's just, it's really important that if they do, when they do come up with that courage, that they are believed. Um, it just, it, it leads to their healing overall. Um, so yeah, super important. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and like you were mentioning, it's super important for us to believe survivors. Louie, why is it important for the community to believe survivors when they come forward and share their story? Well, just as, as Rachel was mentioning, it is so critical to the healing process. And honestly, you know, Rachel has a, an extraordinary story of a system that worked exactly as it was intended to. Does it always work like that? I, I'm, I'm, I, it, no. It doesn't always work like that, but to the extent that, you know, we can let the community know and let people know that this is the way it should happen. And if, you know, and, 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 and to survivors that are, that are watching, if you need a confidential voice to speak to, to talk you through, please pick up the phone, call our helpline, or go to our website and learn more about the Victim Service Center, and then maybe pick up the phone, or stop by one of our, our offices, and you know we'll, we will be there to meet you in your space and try to figure out how we can help you um, get your life back. And if you have know someone that has just been victimized, you know, please hear what we're saying and understand that the words that come out of your mouth, the first words that come out of your mouth could have an impact on that individual for the rest of their lives. And we spend our entire days working with clients like this. So we start by believing every time and, and we help them get to that comfort level where they can go access the services or the therapy or the support groups or just the, just the shoulder to cry on um, in some cases. So it's just really critical that we as a community uh, believe our, 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 our citizens and our clients and then help them get to these free confidential services that are readily available 24 hours a day. Absolutely, thank you so much. And Rachel, what would you say to a survivor who may be nervous to share their story or to reach out to services at the VSC? Um, I get it, <laughs> you know, it's, um the it, the space that you're in 
directly after an event like the one I went through or any kind of trauma can be a very dark place. And it can be hard to believe that there is anything good or that there is a light beyond it. Um, but I would just say, you know, there is. And you, you know, everyone is strong enough um, to, you know, get past it and get through it. Um, I would just say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is. As bleak as it may seem, as hard as that may be believe, to believe, there is. Um, and speaking out and speaking up is the, the first step to walk towards that light and down your half, path of healing. Um, and remaining quiet, it, it doesn't protect yourself. It, it only protects the person that hurt you, um, right. that caused you that trauma. Um, so it's just, it's, it's really important to, um, to speak up and, um, and so that you can, you know, start your path of healing. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people say, you know, I'm not strong enough, but you are, and, and you can. Rachel, thank you so much for being here today and sharing a little bit about your healing journey. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Louie, for talking a little bit about VSE services and what we can help to believe survivors in the community. Absolutely. Next up, we will be talking about ways we can advocate for survivors, so stay with us. Welcome back to the VSC Healing Begins Here podcast. We are lucky enough to be joined by Louis Damiani, the Executive Director from the VSC, and Rachel, one of our amazing survivors and member of the VSC Speakers Bureau. In this final segment, we will be talking about advocating for survivors, the importance of breaking the silence, and sexual assault awareness events. So Rachel, I know that you do so much information and sharing about your story and outreach and speaking engagements. Um, so has that been healing for you? How has that been healing for you? Oh, <clears throat> absolutely. I find that um, each time that I tell my story, it travels uh, a bit farther from me and diminishes its claim over me. Um, also, I see I process something new each time. Um, it can be it can be very healing, um, but you know everyone's path is unique. What helped me might be different for someone else. Um, and what's important is that you just start down that path and and find what does help. But I do think um, the most important thing about telling your truth is that it it marks your claim on healing. Um, and keeping quiet only protects those that harmed you and and de denies yourself that right to heal um and my main goal is always to help others if there is one thing anyone can take or get from my story to, to help themselves or help someone else then i'm able to turn something terribly horrific into something good and and that that's very helpful to me Absolutely. Thank you so much, Rachel. I know that you do so much for the community and you do so much for the VSC. So just want to take this moment to thank you personally for all that you do for the survivors in our community. So thank you so much. Um, Louie, I know that in addition to all of those amazing direct care services that we provide to survivors in the community, we also do some outreach events and we also have other events going on as far as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So can you tell us a little bit about those events? Sure, yeah, we do a whole variety of outreach. You know, you just heard Rachel talk about the fact that we, we do like tabling events and oftentimes we, we have a whole volunteer program where people come uh, volunteer for us. So many times our volunteers will be out in the community. I can tell you the year before COVID, we did 
455 wow. tabling and outreach events around the community. We get invited to all kinds of things, right? So we do that. We do things like this program. But then we also, as you mentioned, have Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And for anyone that might not know, that is during the month of April. And mm -hmm. we do a couple of really special activities in April, always on the first Friday of that of the month of April. We do our big Cheers to Change uh, fundraiser benefit mm -hmm. and um, we usually it's at some place like the science center or the art museum and we get you know 400 of our best friends and in, uh, in a room and have entertainment and a silent auction it's just really uh, a great event a lot of fun a great way to um, learn more about the victim service center but at the same time you know have a great time to support the organization then in the same month of april always on the last wednesday it is an international day called Denim Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Denim Day movement, the, the basic gist is people wear denim on the last Wednesday in April. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it shows solidarity and uh, support for survivors in our community. That's sort of the short of it. And we have on our website a whole page about Denim Day. We have information about Cheers to Change as well. Um, you know, those are a couple of different ways in events that we do. And then in the fall every year, we have a golf tournament. And so we do like really that one event in the fall, a golf tournament. And that's a neat event because, you know, the majority of the folks that show up for it, I'm not going to say all, actually, uh, <laughs> Rachel ha uh, will participate in all, yes. all golf tournament, but the majority of them are men. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great opportunity for us to really get our message to men that sometimes um, we don't have that opportunity to get through to uh, to men because there are male survivors and certainly there are uh, men that are impacted by violence across our community. So we do that and then we also do every couple of years a another men's event called the MVP Breakfast and oh. that stands for Men's Violence Prevention. Of course, when we did it, uh, all the guys thought it was, you know, we had like this picture of a trophy and, oh. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. and they were like, oh, the MVP awards, I have to go. And it's been right. really, really popular. So we do that every couple of years and we get men in a room. We have that conversation to them about like, look, these particularly on the sexual violence front, these are our, our mothers and our daughters and our sisters. And we need to take a stand against sexual violence. So it's super, super powerful uh, event as well. And those are just some of the outreach activities um, that we do. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I love all those different, you know, activities that we have and events that we have for Sexual Assault Awareness Month and beyond. Um, Rachel, you know, you talk, I, I think it's really important that we talk about things like sexual violence. So why is it important that we kind of normalize this conversation? Yeah, um, maybe it's because I work in the field, but um, I feel education is the cornerstone of all the world's problems sometimes. Right. Um, people innately fear what they do not understand. And the natural reaction to that is to turn away or attack it. Um, and real change, I believe, happens when you can remove that fear and get people to understand. Um, so when they can believe that nothing a person did should provoke or justify an assault, that the only shame deserved lies with the person that hurt another. Um, when the media can frame headlines in the right perspective, when people learn the actual statistics of sexual violence and that it could just as easily happen to them, right. um, that's where you get the change. And keeping the conversation going is the best way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just letting people know that they're not alone as well, breaking the silence and letting people know that this is happening um, and there's services out there for survivors as well. Absolutely. Um, Louie, I know also um, that uh, the VSC actually recently celebrated its 20th anniversary of being a nonprofit. So what are you the most proud of that the VSC has achieved? Well, you know, it's helping people like Rachel, honestly. So 20 years ago, we, we became a nonprofit organization. We were a tiny little agency in downtown Orlando with one little office. I think we had five people when we started. And that year we helped 400 people. And we were wow. ecstatic. We were right. tickled. That we're saving yeah. the world, right? You fast forward today, we helped over 5,200 clients during wow. a pandemic 
in a normal year, that number is going to be up over 7,000 clients. Wow. We have office, satellite offices in three uh, counties. And, you know, it's just extraordinary, the, 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 the growth and our ability to, to help people and literally impact and change and save lives here in our community. And I know, Louie, you were kind of at the beginning of when it started, yeah. and now you're back as the executive director. How's that? Been? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been, you know, um, it's been a wild ride, right? So I was there at the inception, helped to create the organization, never dreaming that I would ever work in, in this field or in this role. But, you know, life has a way of coming full circle. And about eight years ago, the board of directors asked me, would I be interested in coming back and leading the organization? And, um, you know, it has been the most rewarding and fulfilling uh, part of my professional career. And mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be part of it. And I know our entire team it owns that as well and feels that same way. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, just uh, super proud. And I'd certainly encourage any of your viewers to if you want service and you want people that are going to believe you and uh, help you, then it's a natural, you know, find us, reach out to us and we will never judge you and we will always try to help you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Louie. And Rachel, just as a final question to you, what would you like to, you know, share to, to the survivors that may be listening? Um, just that, uh, you know, I know that, you know, sexual assault or any kind of trauma can feel very isolating um, and, again, very dark, but uh, you are not alone. And um, there, there are people and services like the VSC to help you, even if you don't have people in your lives to do that for you. Um, and, and seeking out those services is, is, or any kind of help is important. You know, speaking up is important. Um, and you're not alone and, and you are strong enough to, to survive it. You are. Thank you so much, Rachel. I can't thank you enough for being here today, sharing your story and talking about, you know, starting by believing. So thank you so, so much, Rachel. Absolutely. And thank Happy you, Louie, for being here and talking about VSC services. And if you would like to learn more about the Victim Service Center, please visit healhere.org and to everyone listening healing is not linear and you are not alone so see you next time